Hi everyone, if you just want to see the demo of a complicated FSD drive in Manhattan Beach, skip to 431 in this video. However, you'll be missing my funny take on how I qualified to be a beta tester. I purchased full self-driving when I bought my Model 3 Performance in February of 2020. I paid $7,000 for it at that time. I know that's a lot of money, but today's price for full self-driving is $10,000. Anyway, after downloading the software, I rushed to my car to request a full self-driving beta. After clicking the request button, I was put into the queue. So did I get it? Not so fast. Tesla started monitoring my driving to make sure I was a worthy, safe driver, and I was able to see my driving score on the Tesla app. I was scored on five factors, and I'll demonstrate them for you now. Forward collision warnings, Heartbreaking. Aggressive turning. Unsafe following. And forced autopilot disengagements. A lot of people requested the full self driving beta. Many of us have been waiting months for the software. So now to be scored on safe driving, well, I started noticing Tesla drivers in my area driving like our more experienced citizens in order to keep their safe driving score as high as possible. Keeping my safety score up was really hard. One day, for the first time ever, a squirrel appeared right in front of my car. In a split second, I had to choose between the squirrel and getting dinged for hard braking. I chose the squirrel. And so I drove very cautiously for a week, ending up with an overall score of 97. I was confident that this high score would show that I was deserving of the beta version of self-driving. But another disappointment. Elon Musk tweeted that the beta was only going to be awarded to drivers with a score of 100. That damn squirrel. Well, I persevered for the next two weeks and eventually got my score up to 99. And then Tesla announced that another full self-driving beta version would be rolled out to customers who had a score of 99 and above. I was so excited, but then Elon Musk said that it would most likely be rolled out Friday at midnight. What does most likely mean? Well, I checked my Tesla app as soon as I woke up on Saturday morning the beta was there and I was eligible. I felt like I was coronated and blessed by Elon Musk himself. I downloaded the beta and I was good to go, but I wanted to run a quick errand before filming my first FSD ride. During that drive, I kept on getting annoying Ford collision warnings, even though I was nowhere near the cars in front of me. It turns out there was a problem with the FSD beta, and Elon Musk shut it down for everyone later that morning. But then on Monday morning, Elon Musk tweeted that a revised version was being released. I received an email from Tesla that I didn't get the first go around, and then soon after I was able to update my software. Our little dog wasn't impressed. So with the new software loaded, I rushed over to my car to try it out. Tesla, open the driver's side door. Tesla, open the driver's side door, please. I'm sorry, Steve. I'm afraid I can't do that. I forgot that the ability to physically open doors is not included in Tesla's list of innovations. However, the ability to make fart sounds on demand has been included as a standard feature in every Tesla vehicle for quite some time. Okay, enough joking around. This software version is in development and only a small percentage of drivers who purchase full self-driving have this beta version. It's for testing purposes and it's not ready for wide release. Although my car will be driving itself, you'll see my hands touching the wheel and ready to take control if I feel that there's an unsafe driving situation. Other than that, let's go. That was a phone call. 
coming up on the first stop sign of this drive. My Tesla has put its blinker on and it's making a right turn. Notice this part of the display. It's showing a representation of what my Tesla sees. And the dotted line shows its predicted path. My car is operating on what's called Tesla Vision. It has eight cameras that simultaneously provide my car with a 360 degree view of what's happening around it. It uses this information in what's called its neural network to predict and make decisions on how it will navigate to its destination. For this beta, I agreed to allow Tesla to collect data to feed its neural networks powering its full self-driving systems. My car can detect when I intervene during full self-driving operations and it sends the data back to Tesla in order to help the neural networks improve. I can also record and or email FSD midsteps to share my experiences with Tesla. I have FSD set to drive two miles below the speed limit. But for me, this is even faster than I would normally drive in this neighborhood. This is a complicated intersection and my Tesla has a lot of trouble with it. Look at the dotted line wiggling. My car is unsure on how to proceed. Watch me take over control as we make the turn. Again, this is a beta version of the software and missteps are expected to happen. On the total drive seen in this video, this is the only instance where I took over control. Our destination, the Manhattan Beach City Hall, is on the left. I'm going to make a right turn, pull over, and reset FSD to drive me home. Okay, FSD is engaged again. We make a right turn here, and I'm impressed on how it handles this SUV coming towards us. I'm not intervening at all. Many of the streets in Manhattan Beach don't have sidewalks. I was impressed on how FSD plotted a path between these two pedestrians, walking in the same direction but on opposite sides of the street. As I mentioned before, I'm a little uneasy with the speed my car is going on these narrow streets. However, keep in mind that the car's neural network is very powerful and has the ability to quickly react to pedestrians or obstacles in its path.
This is pretty much a blind intersection on the left and we need to make a left turn. Notice how the car creeps forward and pauses when it sees oncoming traffic. You've probably seen this come up on the screen a few times during the drive. It says apply slight turning force to the steering wheel. It's Tesla's way of reminding you to keep your hands on the wheel. Tesla will disengage FSD if you don't obey the warning. I'm very comfortable with FSD on a wide street like this one. For me, however, getting comfortable with FSD on the narrow streets in our neighborhood will take some time. At this intersection, there's a stop sign, a bike rider who may or may not be in our path, two pedestrians, and another stop sign. FSD handled it pretty well. I hope you were entertained by this take on my FSD saga. Since you made it this far, please do me a favor and subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe.